Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the podcast. Um, my name's Jackson, and I'm so excited to have you here this week for episode 11 of Home Sweet Homecast with the mm -hmm. uh, incredible, with my incredible co host. That's right. Yeah, well, we can do that. It's <laughs> 11. We, we, we shoot like a little uh, uh, image for the for the thumbnails on YouTube. We should have done that. That should have been it. Like, it, oh, it, yeah. it should have been that yeah. 11. for 11. But it's all right. We're, we're learning every week. Absolutely. Um, Mom, how you doing? How's it going? Doing good, doing good, doing real good. Um, been a busy week. Um, spring is here and spring break has come and uh, everybody's starting to warm up. Weather's getting better yep. and that usually means real estate. So yep. people are looking. It's a good time. Ready to go. Well, um, today we've got an episode that is near and dear to our heart, like specifically what we do, like as far as real estate stuff and what we care about. Um, today we're talking about basically... Uh, one, honestly, why you should be investing, especially in DFW real estate, but um, yep. really even more than that, like how do you build generational wealth and how do you change the lives of not only your kids, but your grandkids, your great grandkids, and even your great great grandkids? Like how do you make a difference in the lives of people who won't even probably know your name, honestly? <laughs> so, I mean, really. Yeah. You just be a legend. Yeah, exactly. So they'll, they'll know that that's where that came from and, and where you, you know, uh, their life today, their life that day uh, will be so drastically um, affected by you. So in a good way. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, we're talking about that. We're talking about, and basically we're going to be looking at this as a beginner's guide. So we're going to kind of assume today that you really yeah. have no experience investing, um, that you really have no experience thinking of real estate in terms of investments. And so we're going to kind of start from the ground up and build it up. Um, and mm -hmm. that's what it's going to look like. That sound good, mom? Absolutely. One of my favorite topics to talk about. Yeah, well, so it's, you know, talk about it a little bit. It's so like, what, what has this, you know, what's your story with real estate? What's your story with like, you know, mm -hmm. this is something for, for you that's very important and it's becoming important for me um, as I get into this real estate stuff and learn more about it. But like for you, where did that come from? So, um, probably comes from, um, I think it comes from generations past. Oh, really? So, yeah. In my family, um, you know, owning a house was a really big deal. Yeah. So, um, dad, mom and dad, you know, had been married only about a year and they were living with, uh, my grandmother who she was a single woman and back in like, like the 1920s Wow. and she owned her own home. That was very important to her. Um, so she did that. And then, um, mom and dad lived with her for a little bit while they were saving up money when dad got out of the army. Um, and was able to save up enough with her help yeah. um, to then buy a house for ten thousand dollars. So isn't that amazing? Um, on an acre. Oh my god. So um, and you know what's funny is that Granny still lives on that acre. Wow. She's still in that house wow. these years later. So yeah, and the world. Uh, but anyway, it was really it was really important. Yeah. yeah. The world around that house has changed so drastically. I'm sure, like, because it's it, yes, it's right in between a lot of the the gosh eight twenty. Uh, 20 like mm -hmm. intersection part of Arlington and it's it's uh I can't imagine like just being able to look out and not see highways everywhere like that's crazy to think about that yep well it was you know and and, and again tested testimony to legacy is a piece of mom's property has now been bought by the city for a new highway expansion that's happening Jeez. so her property is eventually going to be prime commercial property sure, heck yeah so you know that's just you know a testimony to what real estate can do. Yeah. You know, real estate is all about the time. Yeah. So if you've got the time and you're not desperate to sell it or make money off of it, you, your real estate can really cash in at some point yeah. for you quite well. Yeah, totally. So anyway, a ha owning a house was very important to uh, mom's side as well. So um, she also, um, her parents owned a home uh, in Kennedale. So they owned a home all these years in Kennedale and um, uh, owned it until my grandfather passed and it was passed down through the family and it is now also commercial property. Wow. So, you know, there's just, there's just that in our legacy. Plus, you know, um, dad had, his dad had um, 60 acres in Bridgeport. Really? So uh, we grew up, you know, trompsing around on the acreage. They had a farm. <laughs> And it was 60 acres. And, you know, the thing that both my brother and I always regret 
is that dad decided to sell that mm. property because it is right in the middle of a huge development now wow. and uh, there were woods and creeks on it and um, anyway, it was just a really neat piece of property yeah. but you know, he didn't he didn't want the taxes of right it sure at the time so um but that's something you know that looking back on just seeing so many situations in our life that um real estate has really paid off well for people in our family yeah 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 yeah, that's really really cool. I mean, I, I think um, w- I think when I first when I bought our first house, I had no understanding about this. Like honestly, had, sure. had no frame of reference to even think the way that I think about it now. Um, I remember just being like, you know, does it look cute? Does it look livable? Does it uh-huh. look, you know? I didn't really care about the area it was in. I didn't care about. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't really care about floor plans, honestly. I just cared, like, you know, was it inside? You know, could I <laughs> have room for, like, a bed that I wanted to put there? Yeah. You know, it was that kind of stuff, right? So it, it wasn't caring about anything. And then when you, you know, as I, I started, get, as I got my real estate license and I started learning about real estate investing, um, golly, like, there's just so many ways that I could have approached that differently. Now, I don't regret what we did. I loved that first house that we had. It was such a sweet, special place. Um, and we survived COVID in it. Right. So, I mean, that's, that was such a mm-hmm. <laughs> bonding experience with that house. Right. Um, but you know, I just really think that there's some special ways that not everybody knows about. I mean, you know, if, if you're somebody who seeks out real estate investing information, um, then I think you probably know about some of the things we're talking about today, but if you don't like, these are ideas that are out there that are really smart ways to play the market and ways to play it. If you haven't got it, if you have, if you're already own a house, like you can still consider these things. There's things that still work um, that you can jump right into. But um, I think for me, like I didn't know how much real estate was kind of the backing of what I was experiencing growing up. Um, I mean, my story of real estate is really much more about kind of the, the location, like living near people, um, living mm-hmm. in a, in a, you know, I don't, I don't think you guys intended this when you bought it. Cause I don't think you looked at it this way, but we really ended up in a, in a pretty like young family, you know, part of town. Um, I mean, right. that, the whole area was very young family, like a lot of people, my age, um, growing up and, and we're very similar and close in age. And so for me, that was huge because that was friends and that was, um, you know, friends that, you know, to this day, I still call, you know, my, my sisters, you know, it's so weird when people are like, uh, you, you're an only child. And it's like, uh, yeah, but like, then I have to do this whole explanation, right? Because I just got so close with the people that I live nearby and, and it was so mm-hmm. influential to me growing up. Right. So for me, it was all about location. It was never even considering what it could do for, for my, you know, my family, um, gosh, my kid, right. you know, it, it, their kids, you know, any that kind of stuff. It was never thinking about that. And so, um, well, you know, the reason, the reason we bought that house was because of the backyard. Yeah, sure. So, you know, the backyard was so unusual and it was very different than any other house on that yeah. street. And so that was what appealed to us, how different that backyard was. Yeah. And then the school was great. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and that's like, and when you think about it, like when I think about my childhood, it was like either that backyard or it's like almost every memory is synced up with that backyard or it's synced up with uh, like the lake house kind of thing that granny owned. But again, that's all property. That's all locations. That's all mm-hmm. things that made significant impacts to me um, growing up because of the location of it, what it allowed me to do because of that, the experiences it allowed me to have, like all of these things were just so important. And I didn't realize real estate was, you know, the root of it until now, honestly, until like basically now I'm in my second home now and I am just now realizing um, the kind of house that I actually think I want to look for next um, be, mm-hmm. and look for those kinds of features in it, right, mm-hmm. for, for that. But again, that that is all looks and amenities, right? It, it's more in that vein. That's not even in what real estate's going to do for people just as a, as a, as an asset. I mean, for real. Um, mm-hmm. so just, just even going down to that, um, vein of things. So, I mean, well, you know, that reminds me that we had in that first house, we had maxed out, um, the top value that was possible in that specific little subdivision. So we had improved the property to such a point that we were not going to be able to get any more out of that home. 
So that was really one of the things that I looked for in our next property was to make sure that there was room within the next subdivision we were going to live in. Interesting. Where when we did our improvements, because we bought a house that needed improvements. Yeah. So when we did those improvements, that we were going to have some room to max out that price. All right, there's like <laughs> what was that? there's a mosquito. What are they called? Mosquito eaters or whatever. Uh, oh, a big like guy in my yeah. room, and it's flying around. So like at any point today, <laughs> this will add a little bit of like drama into the podcast today. Any point it, that could happen again. It, it wants to be on screen. Oh my gosh! Yeah. yeah, I don't know how it got in the house. It's driving me nuts. I guess it's that's like over funny. here. It's like over there. He's crazy. Um, that's really interesting because I I would never thought about. It. But so what's interesting about this whole thing too is that you weren't a real estate agent yet. Like you were just you were a consumer. I had you, been one year. When, when we bought the second house. I've really? Been one year you had started by then? Yeah. Uh-huh. I didn't know that. Wow. Yep. Yep. I've been a real estate agent for one year. And, um, and yeah, that was, that was part of the strategy. No, no, no. When we bought Blackberry, flight. when you bought Blackberry. Oh, we bought Blackberry. No, no. With our first property, I was not yeah. an agent at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. No, no. It was the second property. That yeah. So that's just, that was, that's just cool to me. Like that, that y'all mm -hmm. were thinking that way already at that point, obviously your second house, that's a brilliant way to think. I would have never considered that at all. <laughs> so that's really smart. <laughs> well, you know, we had, we had so over improved that right. first house. We had, we had spent thousands of dollars on concrete yeah. and a retaining wall and a detached garage and so we had really over improved it. So we, it was great for us while we lived there. Yeah. Um, it was great. We got our, our use out of it. Um, but as far as getting money back for the money we spent, we didn't, we didn't do that on that first yeah. house. So yeah, I was really trying to do more of that on the second one. That's so cool. All right, well, let's mm -hmm. jump in. So, um, you know, what I would think about this podcast as it is, you know, for us, that's where we're coming from. What we just kind of shared, that's our background and that's why real estate really, and I mean, obviously you're looking at a, as a, at a, at a mother, son, you know, duo or whatever, like it, it's very generational in that way, right? It's very generational mm -hmm. in, in a very core part of just what we do uniquely in real estate is generational. And mom cares about that. She, you know, anybody she talks to, she talks about generational wealth. Um, for me, I'm going to talk about location, like I mentioned, but also talk about just the ways in which this can really change your life and change the life of the kids, you know, mm -hmm. legacy, right? That's a big part of this. And so I think, um, you know, being somebody who has been in that spot where you just thought of real estate as what does it look like? You know, does it, is it a place that I can live? Cool. How does somebody like take that to the next level? And so I think, um, I want y'all to think about this today as like, what do, we're hopefully going to teach you some ideas today. Um, but then also like, don't forget to teach your kids about this stuff. Like, don't forget mm -hmm. to like, this is something that is passed from generation to generation. Like this isn't something I talk about this all the time. This is something you don't learn about in school. Like whenever I talk to first time home buyers, it's right. like, they have no idea. Really sad. Time, huh? It's really sad. It is. Yeah. It's extremely sad. We it's such a huge people. part of life. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It's just huge. And so like, you know, when I talk to first time home buyers, I'm just like, Hey, like, you know, let me show you these things. And then every, almost every single time they're like, why don't we learn about this? Why don't we know about this? Mm -hmm. You know? And so I think for us today, our goal would be for you to have some of those moments of wow, aha, that's what this is. And then just don't forget to share it with the kids. Cause they're not going to learn it otherwise, like unless they go right. looking for it and they, not everybody does. Yep. Right. So, yeah. Well, and if you can, if you can, you know, provide a basis of some real estate wealth building knowledge. I mean, that's just two steps further up, right? Yeah. Then when they start to learn, they're already ahead of Heck the game. Yes. So yep. if you can provide some kind of a foundation um, with some knowledge, then yeah, you're getting your kids way ahead yep. on this. Well, so you would say, mom, just from our previous conversations we've had off screen, like budgeting for you is like a first place to start with that. So talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. So this has to do with living below your means. So the reason why that's such a big deal is because if you are always living to the money that you bring in the door, then you'll never have extra money mm. to put to work yeah. for you. And, you know, we're talking today about real estate, but that could be putting it to work with um, insurance policies, with investing in the stock market. Yeah. There's other ways to do it, too. We just happen to be fans of putting it into real estate. Yeah. And um, if you don't have the cash, you have to start somewhere with some cash. 
And a way to do that is with some savings. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the budget comes in and figuring out how much percent can you live on yeah. less? Like of the hundred percent you bring in, can you live on 60? Can you live yeah. on 70? Can you live on 75? Can you live on 80? Whatever your number right. is. And then stick with that and be very religious about putting yeah. aside your savings for your money to invest. Yep, totally. So, you know, there's a lot of people that do budgets, you know, Dave Ramsey, great sure. yeah. place to learn how to do a budget. Didn't you do that when you were in college? Yeah. Well, so when I was in college, I was working for a youth group and, and we did, I did the youth version. So they call it like generation, um, oh gosh, generation change or something like that is, is what mm -hmm. the program was. But I mean, even, even the youth version was still so huge. I mean, the problem for the youth version, I think was just that like kid, you know, most kids don't have an understanding of why this is important yet <laughs> until they yeah. get into college, you know, and. Um, I still have friends today who do the envelope system he, he talks about. Um, huh? you know, I, I, uh, we, we used to do a little bit of that. We do a lot less of that now. We, a lot of the foundational stuffs are in there for sure. Um, but yeah, he's honestly a brilliant place to start y'all. There are ways you can mm -hmm. build upon the things yeah. he teaches for sure. Um, as you go out, but he's a really great place. He's an easy place to start. That's just very to the point. So. Absolutely. Yep. And then I've got another place. This is what I use in business. So I really like this this author, hold this right here, um, Profit First. So this is a great book by Mike McAllowitz. And what this book teaches is you take 40% of what you bring in, and that is what you live off of to pay expenses. Okay. So it's like your, your expenses for groceries and yeah. you know, rent and that kind of stuff. And then you put 15% aside for your taxes. And then 10% is set aside for basically it's profit. So that's money that you can do something with um, to invest, or maybe it's education to learn how to invest. And then you have a 35% that is your owner draw. So basically that is your money to spend. Hopefully you would spend it on something that gives you passive income, sure. putting that money to work yeah, for sure. you. So. So that is one way to look at doing it too. Yeah. Um, it's a great book it, it and it's real easy as well. It actually recommends that you set up an account, a separate bank account for each of those pockets. Oh, interesting. Cool. So you're, it's kind of like the, you know, it's very similar to the envelopes. Yeah. You're setting aside money into pockets. As human beings, I think that we tend to, if we put money into places, you know, stash it yeah. a little bit in places, we might leave it alone. Yeah, sure. So it might be able to grow. <laughs> right. <laughs> So yeah, that's the concept there too. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I, I, so yeah, that's really, I think that's really important. Yeah, you got You got to have some money to start yeah, with. Yeah, and I think you know I, I'm old school. Well, this is hardly old school because I think old school would be actually like managing a checkbook probably. But um, ex, probably. Ex, it under your bed. there are apps that do this now, right? But like Excel spreadsheets yeah. is what I use. Um, I said it's a Google Sheets, but yeah. um, you know, for me, what was important and what is is important in my life that I want to really stick to is I really want to. Um, uh, I, I, tr I track a lot of, um, earned in income and unearned income. So income that you mm -hmm. had to work for and then unearned income, which is like passive income, basically. Um, for me, I really want to build a lot of streams of that. And so a, a lot of opportunities to, to re just received unearned, you earned it. I mean, you had still had to work for it a little bit. It, it's never truly passive, but it's mostly passive. Um, mm -hmm. and so, you know, I, I all my budget is completely built with like, uh, you know, every section has a, a basically a total, a total earned, total unearned, and then opportunities for me to begin getting more unearned, op, um, you know, parts of that. So it looks a lot like real estate properties and investments and stuff like that for me. But um, I think mm -hmm. that's another way to do it as well. You know, it just depends on your goals, like whatever your goals are, like mm -hmm. scaling that, you know, and, and um, mm -hmm. I, I love, you know, yeah, I think the most, like, like you said, the most important thing is, is tracking it yeah. somehow. Yeah. You know, if you can, if you can just track it so that you see each month, yep. you know, did I have, did my interest go up? Did my principal get paid off, you know, on my mortgage? Right. I mean, what are, what are things that are making slow, steady progress towards? And it's very rewarding yep. and it kind of helps you keep going with the budget. Yep. So, you know, there's also a, a net worth tracker that you can use, which will track everything like your automobiles, you know, as you're paying off your automobile loans, sure. you get more equity that way, more asset yeah. development. 
if you're paying off your mortgage, if you are um, putting aside money in savings. So it tracks all those kinds of things so that you see each month, you kind of have more and more assets, mm -hmm. more and more wealth that you're accumulating. Yeah. So that's another way to do it too. That's awesome. That's all really good stuff. Well, I mean, I think this leads just into, you know, once you get that budget established, then we talk about as far as real estate goes, renting versus buying um, and, and mm -hmm. kind of that whole dichotomy because really um, renting like uh, is it, it's never a bad thing, y'all. I mean, it just, it's not a bad thing. I, th I feel like as real estate agents, a lot of agents want to tell you it's a bad thing. There is a better thing though <laughs> that is buying when it makes financial sense for you and your family because, mm -hmm. you know, not just because we're realtors and we want you to buy houses, like just because you then own an asset versus you paying somebody's asset off. Like you mm -hmm. all of a sudden now have an asset to your name that is growing in value appreciation, right? Like, you know, low balling DFW, like we have six to 8% of appreciation a year. Um, and that's just, that's a big number y'all. It's a big deal. Um, and, and so that's money that you just make by simply owning the property. Um, and, and so mm -hmm. that's nice because that's kind of the reason for, for me, one of the biggest things for buying versus renting, and especially in this investment generational mindset, you know, if you're always paying something off, um, for somebody else and you're never paying your own thing off, you're never owning your own piece of property. Mm -hmm what's happening is that there's nothing that you're able to leave because you don't own anything that that person you paid that property off for, they've got this great piece of property to now leave to their kids or their kids can sell it and, and pay for their kids, you know, college or whatever, right? Like there's a lot of opportunities that that thing could be used for. Um, and, and you, you allowed that to be possible for them, which isn't a, a bad thing. That's a gift that you've given that family. But what if you gave that gift like to your family? You know, what if you gave that mm -hmm. gift to your grandkids, to your kids? Um, th mm -hmm. There are big changes that happen in the life uh, of, of your generational tree um, when you do things like that. It's huge. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Can change, can change people's lives. You know, the only, the only place that I really see where long-term renting can make sense is if that person as they are renting is very budget minded. Yeah. And they put a good chunk, I mean, a large chunk of money aside and invested in something as if they would have been investing it into a mortgage, yeah, 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 into yeah. a property. If it's saving you the I mean, money and allowing that, you to do that. Yeah. 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 You know, very, very, I mean, I don't know if I've ever met a person that does right. that. Very few renters actually do that because it takes so much self-discipline. Yeah. Well, we also, so I mean, we talked about it two weeks, I think two or three episodes ago, just about like the difference in DFW between rent prices and sale prices is mm -hmm. only like 200 bucks, y'all. So, I mean, it's that difference, yeah. you know, can be very easily made up by appreciation. So it, mm -hmm. in this market in DFW specifically, it's kind of hard to make those those numbers work. It's not impossible, but it's, it's kind of hard to do that. I think more of like, you know, if you were in an area like Austin or if you were in, you were in an area like, um, sure. you know, more of a city kind of hub, like they, they allow subletting sometimes. Like there there's a strategy mm -hmm. to, to create a, a rental investment, you know, in that mm -hmm. way. Um, but I mean, besides that, like, yeah, just in this area, like buying is what we're shooting for, in my opinion. Um, as soon as you are mm -hmm. financially capable of getting there, you want to buy a house just for what we talked about, like appreciation, getting that, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. gosh, paying that off. Yeah, because that, that's, that is the number one rule of investing, right? Is compound interest. Yes. So money investing money. takes that into consideration. Money's making yeah. money on the side, bit by bit, yeah. you know, tripling, doubling, quadrupling. And so it's, it's making money that way yeah. through the appreciation. Yeah. And I think even when you, when you buy like, so like that's renting versus buying, but even when you buy, there are ways to do that, that aren't just your standard, you know, like, like what I did, right. That mm -hmm. I mentioned in the first part where you are just looking for a house that works, right. Or, or you're looking for a house that looks good kind of thing. Like there are ways to, to approach that mm -hmm. process that make it, um, do that faster. The things we're talking about appreciation faster or, or, um, become an investment faster. Um, you know, for me, what I have done, what I always wanted to do first off was I wanted to do house hacking. So house hacking is just a concept where basically you would buy a duplex. Usually, um, you would live in one half of the duplex and then you'd rent out the other half of the duplex. So you're monthly at that point because they're paying probably pretty dang close to your mortgage, um, is maybe 200 bucks or something like that out of your pocket. 
because mm -hmm. the other person's paying so much for it. It may be the whole thing. I mean, you may be able to get that rate where they cover your whole mortgage for that property. Um, but if not, it's going to be a significant chunk of that. And then they're paying that off. Once you've saved up what you need to go do something else, to go move to your next pro property, um, then you just fill that slot in the thing. You keep the duplex and you go do your next thing. Um, so, I mean, that's, I always wanted to do that. That's kind of hard to do in DFW. Honestly, it's not impossible. Um, our duplexes are just kind of few and far between and, and, uh, mm -hmm. especially in places that you would want to live in. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that's yeah, kind of, the, yeah, it's the standard. So, um, but what we, what we did instead was we bought and then before we really went, you know, mm -hmm. crazy with, uh, finances or crazy with, you know, expenditures and stuff like that, we went ahead and saved up another down payment. Um, and so the second we bought, we saved up another down payment so that we were able to keep our first property when we moved to our second one and turn that one into an investment. So that's a, that's kind of a form of, it's not really house hacking, but it's, it's buying to then buy again, mm -hmm. right? It's buying, saving, mm -hmm. buying again. Um, Absolutely. And you, and you can, you know, do some, a few improvements to make it where when it, when you're ready to sell it, it sells really yeah. easily. And if you stay in it at least two years, then not only did you get the, the cheapest interest rate because you bought it as a house to live mm -hmm. in as your homestead, but you also, you know, you're going to not have to pay that capital gains and you can just move right into the next property yeah, from sure. that property. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, those are good ones. Um, I think besides like, what else would you say in, you know, how would you advise somebody besides those two things, if there's something, um, to mm -hmm. buy, you know, I'll call it like buying well when you buy. So if you're going to really buy well, then you're going to want to be strategic. Mm -hmm. So you're going to want to take into consideration, you know, I think you talked about that first house. It, it was just, you just want it to be at least as good or a little bit better than the place you rented before. Yeah. So as long as it had three or four basic yeah. things, you were okay with it. So to be more strategic, to buy well, you're going to consider things like um, school districts. You're going to consider, consider neighborhood location to, you know, grocery stores and shopping. And you're going to just consider, you're also going to run rental comps, mm. you know, before you buy and, and decide, is this going to be a place that'll be rent rentable? Um, so those, that's ways to be strategic, do more analysis. And keep in mind, you don't have to know how to do all this. There are professionals out there <laughs> right. that can do this for right. you. You know, there's just like there's financial uh, consultants. There's also realtors that'll yeah. be happy to run some comps for you. Yeah. We do that for our people that are considering investing. So, yeah, I mean, that's get get a professional yeah. to help you. Yeah, and, and I think you know, there's such a like. Zillow as a service to people, I mean, honestly, is pretty dang like uh, useful. I mean, it really provides a really mm -hmm. great service to people. It, it lets them see houses. It lets them see stuff like that. Um, I always just want to make sure people are aware that Zillow is, does skew some things. Like they'll tell you on their website, they're thirteen, they're thirteen percent yeah. off, uh, up to thirteen percent off with their you know comps and stuff like that. You don't know which way that's going to be. So my point is saying you can get close with Zillow, but just know y'all like if you really want to see what's going on in an area or what rental comps are like, like um, know that like a realtor or somebody like a realtor is going to be your best bet there. Like you, you can get close with Zillow for sure. But at the end of the day, like there's just a little bit more information that we have access to and more specified information that we have access to mm -hmm. as realtors that uh, you won't actually get on Zillow. So just know when you want to get into the weeds with those details, like you're going to need to talk to a realtor for sure at that point. Um, Absolutely. Because it's, it's a big purchase. You want to make sure you did it well. I have a couple other books I wanted to also show. Let's go. <laughs> so I think as after you buy your first house, your first investment, whether you're going to live in it for a while or whether you're going to buy it just to rent, and you, you're going to want to know how to do it. Mm -hmm. So there's lots to learn. And this is a great book by the infamous Gary Keller. Yep. So this is called Hold, yep. and this is a great book for how to buy a house and hold it for rent, you know, keep keep it for rental. So this is more of a long-term kind of a investment. So I think you want to have kind of a mix when you do, when you really get into your investing, some long-term holds and some short-term. And then you're always looking out for the opportunity to do a flip because those do come across sometimes in front of you. You may know somebody who... Um, has a house or just wanting to hurry up and get rid of 
and you know them and they'll take, you know, 50 cents on the dollar to get rid of the house because it'll be easy for them. We're going to have to add so Gary, like add, tag Gary Keller in this podcast because he's getting all yes, the recommendations absolutely. right love, now. I would love to tag <laughs> Gary Keller because he is the deal, man. He, they know how to do this. So those are great. Um, these are really great books. Actually, these are through Keller Williams, but it was written by Rick Villani and Clay Davis. Yep. This one is, and this is really with uh, Linda McKissick. The McKissick group is a really popular yep. um, investment group. So there you go. Yep. So I recommend those books. If you need to know how to get them or where to find them, uh, give us a call because we can um, get you turned on to those. But I think you want to know, that's the thing more than anything we want you to hear today is if you don't know, you can learn. And there's books out there and there's podcasts to learn from. And there's also professionals that will help consult. So um, just because you don't know it, it, it's okay. There's a place to start. Yeah. And, and on those recommendations, I mean, you know, uh, to get to get street cred, y'all, in this investor world, you have to read a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Like, oh, I mean, yeah. you have to. Like, if, if, yep. if, especially as a realtor, if you're talking to investors and you haven't read Rich Dad Poor Dad, like you you're out. Like you know, half the people don't even like listen to what that guy talks about in his book, but like they had to read it as a rite of passage to do it. Um, yeah. So Rich Dad Poor Dad, that's I mean, it, I think it's a great book. It's at least good mindset. It kind of talks about what we're talking about here, of how you look at things in different ways uh, than the rest of the world does. Um, but on top of that, um, I'm going to recommend y'all the uh, bigger pockets podcast, honestly, like, I mean, it is a great, yeah. uh, universe, honestly, at this point, cause they've expanded from just real estate to now like bigger pockets, finance, bigger pockets, like uh, first time newbies kind of stuff. Um, it is a really great, uh, it's a podcast, um, YouTube. I mean, the, the YouTube videos left and right. Um, they do a lot of stuff, y'all. That's really just built around get, helping people begin investing in that and in, in, in how they do it. You know, um, most of my books that I've got are on my wall. I won't move because then you'll see, you know, my floor right behind me, and I don't want you to do that today. Um, but uh, <laughs> most of my stuff is all things that they've written. Um, you know, how to how to buy your first house. Um, gosh, yeah, I've got a whole bunch up there. Um, but just know um, they're a really great service and a really great easy listening kind of thing. Um, they're very, very good in that way. I'm trying to think bigger pockets. Um, man, what else? I mean, YouTube for me, like I, I don't read a whole lot. I don't like to sit down and have to be focused. I like to be able to do other things while I'm consuming information. And so for me, it's either YouTube or it's podcasts. Um, and so I highly recommend both of those for sure. But I'll talk about, yeah. there, there's kind of a, there's kind of a, there's a lot more than this. There's a lot of different ways to do investing in real estate. Um, mm -hmm. Mom already mentioned kind of buy and hold um, and, and bigger pockets would tell you uh, the B R R R. So oh, I'm going to forget all these. You buy, you rehab, you rent out, you refinance. I think I, I think I mixed up the order, but there's something mm -hmm. like that. Um, so anyways, they have a strategy like that. That's really great. Um, so it's buying and holding. So you're actually buying a property, you're renting it out, and then you are sitting on it while it appreciates and then selling it for top dollar when the market is there. If you want to, or you can just sit on it and have them have your renters pay it off. Um, fixing and flipping is the other one. Obviously, that's super trendy because that's been on HDTV, right? Um, the mm -hmm. buying and hold is not on HDTV. Like, it'd be such a boring show, like them running the comps and then like finding a renter and then like, that'd be the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. like, it'd be over that right point. you know fixing and flipping is fun because you get to run into yeah all i think i think buy and hold the the better show where they would be evicting tenants oh sure heck yes <laughs> almost like a cop kind of re yeah that'd be funny right oh my gosh right. yeah yeah that's not, that's not a bad idea okay. hgtv if you're watching like yes yeah. that's, that's it um yeah. how to how to evict tenants you've got so some other kind of uh owner financing strategies that that um, we can talk more about later but sure. um yeah. and then obviously we mentioned it with you know um uh, kind of my granny's property, but um, commercial real estate, y'all. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the way yeah. I always have always heard that talked about is commercial real estate. A lot of the strategies are the same uh, in the way you approach it, but you're playing on the on a bigger playing field, so the returns are greater. I mean, that's kind of the way they think about it. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So on a higher thing, now the costs are more too, of course, mm -hmm. on the front end. But um, yeah, well, in the financing, usually with commercial yeah. real estate, financing is usually a thing. Yeah. So, but there's ways to you know, find people yeah. that can help you with financing. Mm -hmm. so. Well, and I mean, a big one right now, a very trendy one is buying up, um, 
gosh, storage, uh, a land to build storage facilities on, Mm -hmm. buying up land to build RV parks. I mean, those are very trendy right now. Um, So anyways, all this to say, y'all, like just our goal today is like if if when you look at real estate, like what if you looked at it like something that could last generations or affect your generations? What if it wasn't just where I'm going to live when I'm going to live, you know, because I need to live somewhere. It's what if it was where I'm going to live and also, you know, how my kid is going to pay for college or how I'm going to pay for college for my kid or, um, you know, where am I? Uh, um, gosh, I heard somebody the other day like th- their um, their kids g- uh, got married. Well, one of their kid got married to somebody else. Their kids didn't get married. <laughs> just <to laughs> well, be, good. Just to be clear about that. Um, that would be different. That's right. So they got married um, and then uh, needed a place to stay because I, something happened with their job. And because um, they owned a rental property and it was vacant at mm-hmm. the time, there was a spot for them to live as they got their feet kind of back under them, you know, for a decent price. Um, so mm-hmm. it, it just... There, there are a lot of ways that this can affect your kids' lives, affect your grandkids' lives. And so just, I'm going to challenge you today, just think about real estate differently. If you are the person yeah. like me who yeah. thought about it in that very, you know, e- easy, simple, kind of tra- kind of stereotypical kind of way, um, mm-hmm. try to think about it differently because it really can change things when you do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, own a, own a piece of the planet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's it's, right. It's a, yeah, come on and own a piece of yeah, the planet. Yeah. It's a, you, you can pass it forever. Yeah, it's Pass cool. it down through the generations. Well, um, we've talked about, we've talked about very uh, broadly some topics today, y'all. So if you're interested in anything much more specific, mm-hmm. we, I would love the opportunity to just go in deep with you. If you, if one of these things is like, I want to do that, but I don't know how, or you are inspired to do something, like, let us know. We just want to talk to you. Like we just want to help you figure out yep. what that would look like for you in your current situation, um, because we really believe in this. This is something that we really believe in, and uh, yep. and I, yep. I, I I'm not at this current time. I have before, but I plan to do it very soon. I, we will put our money where our mouth is. We invest in real estate ourselves. Um, that, that's what we do because we believe in it. So, mm-hmm. yep. And we we do the same thing. We have property that's accumulating appreciation as we speak yep. in several places. So we're excited about that too. Yep. Yeah. And just, you know, this, we really see this as a way to, um, help families mm-hmm. and help, uh, people just, um, grow their wealth. Yeah. So yep. give us a call if you have questions about there it. There you go. All right, y'all. Well, this has been episode 11 of the home sweet home cast. Um, thank you each and every week for joining us and just, um, yes. it's, it's so fun to do this again. We, are just honored to be people sharing information and honestly um, just hearing the way in which y'all are uh, using this podcast, you know, um, when you have questions, you're going, you're referencing, you know, individual episodes to see, okay, how does this work again? I can't remember how this thing works. It's just, it's been fun. Mm -hmm. It's been really fun to see. We are hearing about it a little bit. So it's, it's pretty, pretty delightful. Exactly. Yeah. It's just nice to know that, that uh, there's a lot of value being uh, got from this. So um, want to just Absolutely. tell you, thank you for letting us know those things. As always, any chance you have to like, share, subscribe, um, it's just going to help us a lot getting this podcast out there in the community um, and helping other people hopefully find value as well in education on things mm-hmm. like this. Um, and then besides that, y'all, I mean, that's what we got. So we'll see you again next week on Home Sweet Homecast. We'll see you next week for number 12.